Aloha, everyone. Thank you for joining me on Think Tech Hawaii. I am Shonda Park, your host for Money Talks. July is recognized as Bereaved Parents Awareness Month. And this month is dedicated to raising awareness for the support that is necessary when a parent endures the loss of a child. My guest today is Gabby Govea. She is a registered nurse with the resource team at Straub Medical Center. She is a grief recovery specialist, and she is the executive director and co-founder of Let Grace In. Let Grace In is a nonprofit organization established in 2017 after Gabby lost her five-year-old son, Grayson, in 2016. Let Grace In provides support to families after the loss of a child by providing services such as monthly therapeutic events, uh, the grief support method educational classes, and hope retreats. I was introduced to Gabby um, by Helena Brooks shortly after my daughter's memorial service on Holomoa Farms, January 10th of last year. And Gabby was looking for a retreat center and reached out to Holomoa Farms. I am grateful that I connected with her, her family, and her team of Let Grace In early on in my grief. Because of the services that they provide, I was able to receive love, receive support, and receive true understanding, which has been a blessing. Gabby, welcome, and thank you for being on the show today. Hi, thanks, Shonda. It's really my pleasure. Thank you. So let's start off by uh, just talking about your story, your family, and the creation of Let Grace In. Okay, yeah. So um, my husband, Ka'eo, and I had our first son, Grayson, in 2010. Um, and he was a vibrant, healthy um, child, loved Legos and Star Wars and playing with his friends. And shortly after his fifth birthday, um, we noticed unusual vomiting. Um, it's worthwhile to say that I'm a nurse right by background so I understood that this wasn't just a normal virus that something was wrong um, and he started having trouble holding his slipper on his left foot which indicated for me some left-sided weakness and so um, eventually we found out that Grayson had a brain tumor um, which turned out to be a diagnosis of a very aggressive brain cancer called glioblastoma um, and there was no treatment at the time um, and we were on an experimental protocol um, he battled bravely nine months no parent ever 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 expects that this is going to be your story um, and it was the hardest thing for us at that time we just it felt like our whole world had just imploded um and Grayson actually was the brave leader always focusing on love um and we were all really focused on just spending that time and being with one another so Grayson died in 2016 in our home on hospice. Um, and he's been actually my greatest teacher in life. I'm so grateful to have him. Um, we have two other daughters. They are now nine and five, Olivia and Charlotte. And um, we all are trying to love on in Grayson's honor. So how did you start and create this foundation, Let Grace In? Well, becoming a brief parent, um, you know, we were desperate to know other families. We were desperate to figure out how could we possibly survive when the pain was so unbearable, it felt like it would just kill us and take us out. 
um, it's definitely something that um, it affects every single part of your life, all of your relationships, um, your work, your your daily living, your functioning. Um, just being able to to move through life is extremely difficult, um, and it actually wasn't something that I was you know, woke up and was excited to do one day was something sort of that called to me over time, realizing how difficult it was to try to pair together um, services and find, you know, very specific um, loss experiences like ours. Um, it, there was limited, very limited resources. Um, so we decided um, to try everything in our own brief walk, which sort of led to a calling <laughs> that I was very resistant to because grief is so big and overwhelming and can be so painful and so ugly that um, I was like, you know, I really, I don't want to do this, but I felt like a, a calling to the work. And as I started to trust that maybe this is what I was meant to do. I was supported, I felt, by community and friends and heaven and our angels and what we needed was provided. Um, and so it's kind of just been part of our journey and part of our own healing process um, to bring all of the resources that we've discovered and to partner with people in the community who want to bring healing and restoration to others together for our family. What a beautiful service that you provide. And one of the services is the monthly ther therapeutic events. So will you share a little bit more about that? Yeah, sure. So um, community is so important. I felt like community was such a big part of the healing process and knowing one another and sharing stories because it really normalizes um, what you're going through, you don't realize that there's so many other people sharing such a similar experience. Um, the things that people say to you or how to deal or, you know, when someone asks you how many children you have, how difficult and how triggering that question can be. So every month we have um, a group. Uh, we, we eat together and um, we share. And there's an opportunity for community to build friendships and to be in a safe space to share your story, to remember your child, to talk to other parents who do understand because they're on a similar journey. Um, and so in addition to just sharing and group, we offer some sort of therapeutic activity and it varies and they're holistic. So they may be more for the physical body one month. Um, they're usually all for the spirit. Um, but there's emotional, um, all kinds of, of different things that we do. Hiking, we did an ocean clinic this past weekend where saltwater healing, getting in the water, community, even sharing a meal is therapeutic. We have um, horses coming up and we do basket weaving, mandalas. Um, so there's just all different kinds of, of things that, that we engage our families in. Um, and it's also an opportunity to see each other once a month or come together, you know, to just continue those friendships and bonds. Yes. Um, I know that's a wonderful support for all the families that you provide your services for, that they have something on a monthly basis and to be able to have that connection with other families. And um, I know that you did a day retreat at Holomo Farms. You want to share about that? Yeah, sure. So during COVID, everything changed and in-person events were very difficult. So we had to shift, um, at, but we never stopped doing services. So um, this was actually right before the Delta variant came out and we did an all day, um, similar to our Hope Retreat, retreat at Holomoa Farms, it was all outdoors. So it was in a, a safer environment where we were able to um, you know, unmask, um, walk, be in nature. Uh, it started with a memorial walk where we all witnessed our children on those beautiful, those signs, pictures. And um, we have different 
uh, professionals that work within that basin. So our La'au Lapa'au, uh, Kumu Kodi um, specialist, he was the one who came and discussed and taught and we did group nature mandalas and um, had child life bereavement for our children engaging in activities that day. And of course, lunch and community and togetherness. And, and really when you're in nature, it's such a great opportunity to, to just soak up the sun and sort of reset and allow you know that healing and restoration to happen naturally. Um, Hawaii is such a beautiful place and there was so much love and good energy there that day. Yes, I was a part of it and I'm yeah. so grateful that I was. Uh, and just to be able to even volunteer and, and give back, it's therapeutic, like you said, and, and being around the other families. Actually, my first event with you was on Mother's Day. And I didn't know how I was going to get through this day, you know, my first Mother's Day without Azalea. And to be able to shortly after that um, participate in that day retreat with Holomo Farms is very healing. And so, again, I just feel so blessed to have met you early on and to be on this journey with you. Um, can you share about the retreat that you had at Mokalea this past December and the retreat that you're going to be having this year? Yeah, so we also do extended time together. So here we have um, our 2019 retreat in Waimanalo and then last year's retreat in December at Mokalea, all of our families um, come together and do more of our, our therapeutic events in over an extended period of time. Um, and it really is like no other place in the world. You know, you really step away from the busyness of life and the distraction of um, the everyday and being, you know, at work and come into an environment where oh, you're with other families and, and just like I did, you exhale, I think, and are able to commit to doing that grief work in whatever way suits you. So it's so individual um, and everybody's grief is different and everybody is at different points in their grief. Um, and there's opportunity to share and to engage in the therapeutic activities um, to have group where we all discuss. Um, we, we do meditation twice a day. Um, and each retreat is unique, uh, themed differently and um, just led actually by spirit. Whatever our team feels called to do or feels is something that we really feel like would be a wonderful therapeutic opportunity for our families, we do. Um, and our retreat coming up in, in October this year will be also at Mokulaia. So they have a lodge there. Um, it's 18 bedrooms. So we're able to rent the whole lodge, um, invite volunteers. Um, we do campfire and sand crabbing. Um, this year, our theme is on movement. So we have yoga instruction coming in. Um, we're talking about how grief lives in our body, um, how we move, big energy activities. Um, Pana Alapai from CrossFit by Teal will be there to help us um, with the energy movement and activity. And activity and movement um, helps in so many different ways. And sometimes when we can't express with words, body and movement can be a way that we process and move grief, grief through our body um, and have an opportunity also to try out things maybe we haven't done before or we forgot that we love um, and see what feels good to kind of move it forward into our everyday life so that we can cope and build our grief recovery muscles around you know this bigger um, around our grief so that we can hold it differently. Thank you for sharing that. I yeah. was a part of your retreat in December, and I remember struggling with the decision of whether or not I was going to RSVP because 
my daughter's one year um, was on December 21st and your retreat mm-hmm. was on December 17th to the 20th. And I made the, the best decision in, in RSVPing because that your retreat that you put on was so well organized and so helpful for all of the families, including mine. I was with my two other children and my life partner, and it really helped to heal and prepare myself for the very next day, which is December 21st, Azalea's one year. So I hope so much. I don't know my schedule. I hope so much that I will be able to attend your retreat again this year in October. Uh, And, you know, the next thing that I wanted to talk about is your website. I watched your video on the Let Grace In website, and you you said you received overwhelming support from the community, from family, from friends, and even complete strangers. And it touched you deeply how people came together to get you through. And you also said that it truly was one of the only ways to help you forget about the financial stresses and worries and just be present with Grayson. So can you elaborate on the financial stresses and worries? Yeah, so um, Grayson had cancer. And um, like I mentioned, his, his type of brain cancer didn't have a standard of care, meaning there wasn't a protocol, something that the hospital um, knew to do that actually helped. So this was extremely difficult. Um, and so from the very beginning, um, our doctors explained to us that we would be doing the best that we could, but, but truthfully, the quality of life he had in the time that we were moving forward um, was, was what they really wanted us to focus on and be with him. It, it's extremely difficult um, to be in that position, but we could only move forward with the biggest hope for his cure. And so we got an experimental protocol um, and he was on um, lots of different chemotherapy. And because he was on a regimen that was still in the experimental phase that hasn't really moved into a, a fully approved protocol, um, the insurance company wouldn't pay for the chemotherapy that he was on. Um, It was very complicated. Grayson's tumor was very aggressive. So when we came in and got diagnosed and had an MRI just three days later when they were preparing for surgery, they couldn't wait and do a biopsy first. The tumor was already bigger, which is like incredibly aggressive. So literally every day, every hour, um, really made a difference and we needed to start treatment right away. So one of the chemotherapies we were on cost $6,000 a month and we needed to start immediately. And the insurance company, um, I think it was a problem with it being an experimental drug. They, they didn't feel like, it, and we didn't have access to a physician for our physician to speak to a physician to physician. So Um, We were in a situation where our treatment was being delayed and we couldn't wait. Um, And, you know, $6,000 a month, um, it was something that we absolutely couldn't afford. Um, And I stopped working immediately. Um, I couldn't, you know, go to the hospital and take care of other people. And my son was five. He needed me. He needed me to help me with his medication. He needed me help with with his vomiting, his symptoms, his pain, his surgery for him, his emotional support. Um, And so I wasn't working. Um, At some point, my benefit ran out because I didn't have any more sick leave. I didn't have any more vacation time. Um, And so also my insurance expired. Um, So we were, and and the insurance also wasn't covering everything. So there was a a lot. I think that people don't always understand how complicated it is even to go through the bills and making sure that all of them are correct and that they're being billed properly. And um, just the idea of, of it being so overwhelming and not knowing, you know, 
what's going to happen to your son? And on top of it, like not being able to work and then not being able to imagine how you're going to pay um, for everything that your son needs to survive um, is extremely receive, overwhelming. How did you receive financial support and from where? Yeah, so the our physician actually had funding through a former patient of his um, and through his very generous donations, there was um, an allotment of money that helped Grayson get his chemotherapy for the first couple of weeks um, until we could work something out with the, the drug company, a compassionate med program. And did you mention that there was also a daily medication that he had? Yeah, that was that was the imaginative. It was a daily uh, oral chemotherapy that he was on. Um, but he was on several chemotherapies, IV, um, needing to be admitted to the hospital. Um, he was inpatient. He was outpatient a lot. So and there was constant therapy and appointments and um, constant medication, day, night, middle of the night um, for all different things for his treatment. And there was also a GoFundMe that was set up to help as oh, well. Yes, yes. So one of our dear friends um, set up a GoFundMe account. And, um, you know, at that time, you're just in a blur, in a daze. There's just so much. It's so overwhelming. Like, you can't even think about anything else. And um, the overwhelming generosity of friends and family and people that we knew in high school or as kids had come through and donated. And Ka'io and I would just look at the list and cry. Because, you know, we really needed help. And we didn't know what we were going to do. And you just are just overwhelmed by gratitude and love when people reach out and help um, and come together in that way. It's so beautiful. And it's really like unconditional love. People didn't, you know, expect us to repay them, they really, from their hearts in the most sincerest way, wanted to love on our family. Um, and we carry that with us still. And I think that it's a big motivation for us in the way that we really want to help others and love on others who are trying to make their way through a very dark day. Um, we've been there. And we have the deepest compassion for that. And so it does inspire us all the time, all the love that we receive. You are, your, your family, you and your family are so beautiful. And the way that you give back and provide for, you know, new families that you come across um, to be able to provide the support. And I, I just want to thank you for that. You know, everything that you receive, now you're giving back. You're giving back to the families, in, including me and, and my family. So I want to thank you, Gabby. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask you another question. Um, you know, you mentioned about Nakamakai yesterday. So I was able to see you at Hale Eva yeah. Beach Park for your monthly therapeutic event. And um, you handed me this beautiful book. It's called My Journey with the Wind, A Magical Story of Grief. So what can you share about this? Yeah, so this year, we're so honored and grateful to publish um, a children's book about a grieving sibling. Um, and so it's, it's a children's book about um, a child who has lost their brother and the journey through um, the tsunami waves of grief and um, a, the calming shore and experience through nature and the difficulty of kind of moving through. Um, and so it's an introduction to emotion and a, a conversation opener for caregivers and families um, and also includes a therapeutic um, section at the end where there's activities um, that at your own timing, you can move through um, suggestions of 
um, you know, the treasure box of memories or a simple meditation for calming um, or thinking about, we talked about anniversaries and birthdays and events that come up and how can we potentially think about them and what we'll do and how we can prepare. Um, and it, it's, it's something that was a collaborative effort with our team. Ashley Wolf is the Child Life Improvement Specialist and our licensed therapist, Jessica Ando, who's also art therapist, um, they co-authored the book and the three of us kind of came together um, with my experience as a bereaved parent and their professional experience working with children and hospice and the hospitals and in difficult situations to um, bring to life a resource for the community to hopefully bring some healing and restoration. Um, and the cool thing also about the book is that everything goes back to Let Grace In. So any sales, any profits from the book all go back to our bereaved families. Um, and so it's available on Amazon for any family who's in need and, or a parent who wants to have a discussion about grief. There's so many things that are happening in our world today that are causing our children grief. There's so many hard things that they're going through, um, even as a conversation opener about what loss and pain is like, which is a completely normal and natural thing that every human goes through. Yet we don't talk about those things. This is an opportunity for anyone, um, any caregiver, any parent, any teacher, um, anyone in the community helping children with pain and loss to engage in conversation um, and activities and just to have an opportunity to acknowledge um, how we all experience pain and grief in our own unique and individual ways. I had the opportunity to read the book Sitting at the Beach and it's such a wonderful book. I, even though it's meant to be a children's book, it really helped me. Uh, and I just, I look forward to sharing it with everyone because like you said, it, it, it's useful to anyone. Right? Yeah. It's very beautifully done. It's a wonderful book. And thank you for gifting that to me yesterday. I'm gonna share it with everyone that I come across. But uh, Gabby, I wanna thank you for being on again today. It's not an easy topic. So I want to thank you for being vulnerable and sharing your story with the world. Yeah, thank you so much for this opportunity. I appreciate you and all you're doing to make a difference in our community as well. Thanks, Shanda. I appreciate you too, Gabby, and your family and let Grace in. So thank you again. And I'll see everyone on the next Think Tech Hawaii show. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.